going on out there American truckers welcome to trucking with old snapper and of course I'm old snapper anyway I'll tell you about a nightmare student this was a while back not at the company I'm currently at but this student was a nightmare it's also why I lost faith in Stevens transports training program I'm gonna get into that all right anyway a little backstory on this student Oh, before I get into that, if you're new to the channel, please hit that like and subscribe button, whichever corner it's in. I get backwards when I'm filming, but uh, smash the crap out of it, whatever corner it's in. And, uh, I appreciate it. Anyway, this nightmare student, let me give you a little bit of the backstory. He had two trainers before me. I would give you his first name. His name was Chris, who was from Houston. Um, I believe he's passed away now. I think he overdosed on, on drugs. He ended up, long story. But anyway, he had two trainers before me. All right. Neither one of the two trainers before me would sign off on him. Stevens called me, and I'd just gotten rid of a student. The student was done, graduated, moving on. Stevens called me and said, hey, we got this guy. A little bit of a problem. Would you mind working with him? You know, and, and I... And I've been kind of known over the years for having unconventional ways of working with students. I, I try to home in on how they learn, and then I focus on that. And I try to teach them everything in whatever manner that they they learn best in. Um, but anyway, that's a video for a whole another time. Get this cat. I go to uh, Dallas, right there, the terminal there in Mesquite. And they, he, they give him a brand new orange card. I don't know if they're still using those orange cards. This was years ago. He used to use these orange cards. And you filled out the orange card every every week. And then you would discuss it with the student. Yada, yada, yada. But anyway, I get to the yard. I pick this cat up. He brings me his orange card. And it comes with a little stack of papers probably five or six pages of papers never had a student ever come to me like that but uh he comes to me with this little stack of papers and uh i don't i set it all up on my dash and i i chat with him for a minute me and him chop it up we get along you know going over the rules of the truck all that kind of stuff Asking him, you know, what he feels he's lacking in and all that kind of stuff. You know, the normal, normal uh, rigmarole. Anyhow, I start reading through these papers. And I'm like, what the hell? It's talking about accidents he's had. Uh, they had evaluated him there on the yard, gave him a road test. He ran through the grass on one of the turns, I think, going from Military Parkway to the feeder road to get on to uh, 635 oh man I mean just a stack of papers like, oh man got my work cut out for me but uh, he seems alright he has a willingness to learn and uh, I'm like alright we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens we'll see, we'll see how this goes take him out I can tell right off the rip there's a problem you know from day to day because Whatever we went over today, he wouldn't remember tomorrow. Like, literally would not remember it. Um, it's like every night he went to sleep and his mind went blank. He erased everything he learned the day before. And I couldn't figure out what was going on with this cat. That was, that was one problem. Um, he, we were in manuals back then. He was having a hard time with the gears. You know, he, he kept getting first mixed up with reverse. I mean, it, it was, it was, that was a whole other story within itself. Now, mind you, at Stevens, your time with the trainers between five and six weeks long. Back then it was. Back then you had to do, you had to bump a dock in all five regions of the country, of the country. You had to do two mountains, two major mountains without a jake, one major mountain with a jake. And it all had to be logged, both on the Qualcomm and in the paperwork. But anyway, we, we start doing our thing. I notice he's not remembering anything. And uh, he seems a little off sometimes, you know. But I'm no psychologist, so 
I'm just watching it, try, observing, trying to figure out what's the deal. You know, is what, what's what's going on? Because he remembers other things in his life, but he doesn't remember anything you taught him from day to day, like map reading, nothing. He wouldn't remember none of it. Um, I'll tell you how scary we, he was. I picked up a load in Washington, and I don't remember where I was headed. I want to say Missouri. I think Hannibal, Missouri. And uh, he drove. Now, he could drive. It, it put him in the seat, set him on the interstate, good to go. But you had to stay up front because he would make wrong turns constantly. But uh, but he was good at driving, you know, long distances. He he had his uh, tolerance built up for running long distance. So he drives from the Idaho Utah line all the way into uh, Wyoming, right? Me and him swap out in uh, Fort Bridger, I believe, at that TA. I think that's what exit 39, something like that. We swap out right there. I kid you not, this cat looked at me and he said, uh, when are we going through Montana? I went, huh? So I grabbed the map. Now my, he's older than me. He's the age I am now back then. And this was 12 years ago, you know. So I look at him sideways and I'm like, what? what? What do you mean? Where are you? When are we going through Montana? <laughs> Show me where you started at. We couldn't find where we started at. So I showed him where we started at. I showed him where we were at. And I showed him where we were headed. And I said, where's Montana in this mix? You know, he said, uh, oh, man, my bad, my bad. You know, he's, I don't know, just lost it. There were many times, like, he would finish the day, wouldn't know what state he was in. Because I always ask students, oh, where are you at? Where are we at? What's going on? You know, where are we? He could never tell you what state we were in half the time. Um, unless we were somewhere he was familiar with, you know, might have grown up or lived. But most of the time, he couldn't tell you what state, what state we were in. So finally, I think I had him on my truck two weeks. I called Stevens, and I'm like, look, man, uh, I talked to the safety director up there. I don't think he's there anymore. Uh, but I told him, I said, look, man, uh, this guy doesn't remember anything from day to day. You know, there, there's definitely something wrong. There, there's something wrong. They're like, oh, no, just keep working with him. Just keep working with him. He'll get it. I said, look, you know, he's over, what, three months into this training thing. I'm the third trainer he's had. Y'all have worked with him on the yard. He's still not getting it. Oh, no, just keep working with him. All right. All right. So I continue to work with him. And, uh. The only reason we haven't had an accident is because I don't sleep. I'm up front with him the entire time. Because I guarantee you if I'd have stepped out of that front seat, even if I'd have stepped to the back just for five minutes, we'd have hit something. Because he could, he had a hard time staying in his lane, hard time focusing, all that kind of stuff. Well, now I'm su suspecting maybe he's on drugs. So I'm watching him even harder. Trying to figure out, is he doing something? Is he doing something I, I don't notice? You know, so I'm paying more attention to him. He's a sleeper and stuff like that. Here's where it gets even more funky. I decided to go get a shower. Well, not offer him a shower. And uh, he came in. Got team shower. He goes and gets his. I go and get mine. Well, I always take my time in the shower. You know, I enjoy it. Man, it, it, it's just... Y'all drivers, y'all know what I'm talking about. Man, that shower is a, it's a, like a theme park to us, man. But anyway, I get out of the shower way later than him, obviously. I get back to the truck. He's not in the truck. Well, no big deal. He's a grown man. Well, you can tell when someone's walking in your trailer. We had an empty trailer. And you can tell when someone's walking in there. I'm like, there's somebody in the trailer. You know, I sitting up front smoking a cigarette so I climb down out of the truck walk around back there to the trailer this cat has a lot lizard in the trailer doing this thing I kid you not man had a lot lizard in the freaking trailer I pretend I don't see nothing I bounce out bounce back up to the front you know I'm like this just 
whatever, whatever. He, at least he's not in the cab, you know. He gets done doing his business. She hops out. He hops out. They close up the trailer. He comes back up front. And I'm like, look, Chris, man, when you get your own truck, if you want to mess with lot lizards, that's your business. That That is totally up to you. But I don't do that. I don't really want them in the truck or the trailer. There's too many bad things that can happen. People get killed messing with them girls sometimes. Uh, pimps show up, kill guys, they get robbed. Um, the cops could show up. I mean, there's any number of different things that can happen. I prefer you didn't do that while you're on my truck. Whatever you do when you get on your own, it's your business. He's like, all right, all right, whatever. I'm like, yeah, appreciate it, man, appreciate it. Well, anyway, a few days goes by. And I usually take a shower every other day, so this was probably, it wasn't the next shower, it was the shower after. Again, hey bro, you want to get, get the shower, let's go. Set him up, he gets his, I go get mine, right? Enjoying it, taking my time in there, you know, got my music playing on my phone. Come out of the shower, go back out the truck again, he's not in the truck, I'm like, oh my god. Oh man, don't tell me he's in the trailer again, you know? So, immediately, I walked back there to the trailer. Well, this time he was in the trailer again. We had an empty. He was in the trailer again. Wasn't with a girl. But he had, got, he had had a little plastic deal. And he was snorting something blue off this little plastic deal. So, right then, I'm like, put the brakes on. You ain't driving no more. And I got to get a hold of Steven. You know, I'm not going to call the law, I'm not going to do all that, but I got to get a hold of Steven. I don't know, that's not coke, I know that. Your boy done a lot of coke when he was younger, and that's not coke. Whatever that is, that's not coke. Well, it turned out, they fly him back to the yard and everything else, but, and he ends up admitting to it and telling them what it was. Turned out it was uh, Xanax, or Xanax bars or something. I don't know, green, bluish pills he was smushing them up and snorting them apparently he had been doing this off on the side throughout all of his training which is why he wasn't remembering nada wasn't remembering nothing all right here's where i lose faith in steven all right steven sent that guy to three different trainers when the first trainer wouldn't sign off on him that should have been the end of it all right by putting him on the second trainer's truck, you're putting that trainer at risk because the first trainer's already told you that that guy is unsafe. Second trainer tells you he's unsafe. All right? You put him on a third trainer's truck. I tell you he's unsafe. You tell me to keep training him. Man, that's that's bad. That that's bad. I don't I don't know. That's Stevens. And that's that's their their mess. Another thing that made me really distrust Steven's program was you could be a trainer there. I knew guys that had jackknives that were trainers. They had jackknife trailer in Wyoming during the winter. They didn't lose their training status. Um, where I work at right now, you get a ticket, you'll lose your training status. Um, you have an accident, you forget it. You're done. You know. So I mean, it's night and day. Uh, the other, one of the other companies I trained for, Celadon, they're not around anymore. But they were kind of the same as Stevens. Anybody could train. They didn't hand a trainer's certificate out to anyone. I literally took a uh, online course on an app that was 30 minutes long, sitting at McDonald's in Kentucky in a truck stop while I was at Celadon. And that made me a trainer. They sent me out a student the next day, or a couple days later. <laughs> you know? At least Stevens had a class you had to go sit in for two or three days. But that's probably the uh, wildest student I ever had. Uh, I train, I've got five years, a little over five years worth of training, and I've only put one student off my truck, like just throw him off my truck. Um, Chris was pulled back to the yard, and. Uh, I'll tell you something else kind of funky about that. Chris stayed in touch with me. I mean, we remained uh, friends. He understood. I told him, I can't have that. And we remained cool. He ended up going to work for uh, Transport America. I don't know 
how he got in there, but he got in there. And I don't know if he went through their training program over there or what, but he, he wrecked a couple of their trucks. And then uh, he ended up going back to Houston, getting hooked on drugs, harder drugs, I guess. Ended up living at a trap house, basically, an abandoned house they were selling dope out of. And then he eventually died of an overdose. Uh, his ex-wife will still reach out to me every now and then. Never met her in person, but she's pretty, she's pretty cool. And she always kind of kept up with me with how Chris was doing, and I, and I tried to put him in my program that I got down there to help drug addicts, and it, it didn't work out. He wouldn't, he wouldn't stick with it. Um, she, she was in some porn, you know, she was, she was a cute, cute girl. I mean, I ain't talked to her in a little while, but she's a cute girl. She's married to another guy now. But I think uh, Soccer Moms 21 or Soccer Moms 1 or something. She was in one of them porns back when they were both together and both doing drugs together. She had gotten involved in, in that industry. But uh, if you work at Stevens, man, be careful with them students they give you. Stevens doesn't vet their students very well. Um, if you're a trainer there, man, please work. You got to remember these guys are going to go on to other companies. And you, these guys are going to be driving around your families, your kids, your grandkids. You want these guys to, to be right. You know what I'm saying? They, they get out there, they have an accident. It, it's a small world, man. They may hit your wife and kill your wife at home, or hit one of your kids. You know what I'm saying? So try to do what's right. Do what's right. You can do what's right without being a hater. It's like right there, I didn't call the law. I could have called the law, but I'm not going to do that, man. I've been in jail. I'm not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not trying to push that on them. But at the same time, this guy's done driving on my truck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Send him back. Stevens can handle it. That's between him and Stevens. You know. But anyway, I hope all of y'all out there doing great, staying safe. I hope y'all had a great Thanksgiving. Um, I've been leaving cards around the country, little cards on the back's got my website, email address, and stuff like that. I've been just kind of leaving them periodically here and there. When I get fuel, I'll leave it at the pump that I'm at. If you happen to run across one of those cards, man, hop in one of these videos, and make a comment on it where you found it at. I'm interested in seeing how far they go, you know. And, of course, I got those pins I've been giving out as well. Uh, another driver who works over at DHT. If you're someone who's been interested in DHT, he started a, a channel, Brian Flat. Really great dude. Um, really down to earth guy. Very straightforward. Uh, hit up his channel. Check him out. Road Hammer, I believe, is his uh, is his YouTube name. But really good dude. And he's he's working at DHT, and he's been there a while. So if you're interested in DHT, he can tell you all about it. Watch out for them students snorting pills in your truck or trailer. Stay safe. Remember, we're all a family out here. Be kind to one another. I appreciate all of y'all for watching. And keep trucking.